from the last video on integration, where we discussed what happens when an area is below the x-axis. It provides a negative result when we do the integration. So I'd like to look at this example together. Y is equal to x, x plus 1, x minus 2. Now this graph here, as we may see, is a cubic, is a cubic graph. And like I mentioned before, it always helps to draw a graph if a graph is not provided in the exam question. But it may not be. And cubic graphs is part of the course that you're expected to be able to draw. So what I suggest we do first of all is let's expand this cubic. So we have x, if we expand this out we get x squared minus x minus 2 and we get x cubed minus x squared minus 2x. Now we can see it's a positive cubic which means the shape looks like this. We can see from the factorization that if you set each bit to zero, you will get the roots, because that's what we do when we set y is zero, we get the roots. So x is zero, which means we have a root of x is zero. This bracket, if you set that to zero, means we have a root of x is minus one. And here we have x is equal to two. So the graph looks like... Now, if an exam question asks you to find the finite area between this cubic graph and the x-axis, you notice there is a part of the finite area, there is a part, a part of the finite area that is above the x-axis, and a part of the finite area that is below the x-axis. So you may have thought that if you want to find the complete area between the graph and the x-axis, as far to the left, the area is when x is minus 1, and as far to the right, the only area is when bounded when x is 2. So you might think, OK, I'll pick up the total area by integrating between minus 1 and 2. Just like if you had a graph where the area was above the x-axis, between minus 1 and 2, you just sweep the whole area in one go by integrating from minus 1 to 2. However, this is, this is going to be very problematic if you do that, based on what we learned in the last video. Why? Because when you integrate between 0 and 2, we learned that the integration will be negative, because the area is below the x-axis. So, let's say that when we integrate between 0 and 2, that the result is, has to be negative. Let's just say it's minus 10. And we know if we integrate between minus 1 and 0 from the graph, I can see it's positive. So let's say that that area is 20. If I did the area in one go by integrating all the way from minus 1 to 2, it would do 20 minus 10 in one go and give me the final answer of 10. However, if these figures are correct, that's clearly not right. Because if this is an area of 20, and this is an area of 10, but below the x-axis, really that's 20 and 10. The minus just means it's below the x-axis. So really the answer should be 30, not 10. It should be 30. So what do we learn from here? We learn that if your area that you're trying to calculate goes below the x-axis, partly, or perhaps the whole problem, like we saw in the last video, you have to be very careful. So in a problem like this, where this part of the area is below the x-axis, you must do it separately. We cannot do the integration in one go. So what do we have to do instead? We have to integrate between 0 and 2, see what that result is. I expect it to be negative. Remove the negative. Then do this integral here regularly, it should be positive, and then add the two together. Otherwise, the two areas are going to net off, like I showed you before. So, for a problem like this, you need to do two separate integrals. But, it's not quite as bad as you might think, because the actual integration is the same. Once you've done the actual integration for one, it's the same integral for the other. 
except it will just be different limits. So let's have a go at this now, and let's put this. We've established we need to do these two integrals separately to prevent the areas netting off and giving us the wrong, the wrong, the wrong result. So let's integrate the curve, which we already established was x cubed minus x squared minus 2x. So let's do that integral. x cubed minus x squared minus 2x with, res with respect to x between minus 1 and 0. Now... I can see from my sketch, this has to be a positive result, because the area is above the x-axis. So, let's see. We have x to the 4 over 4, I'm now doing the integration, minus x cubed over 3, minus x squared between 0 and minus 1. Now, as is the case with integration, with limits, a definite integral, you put in the top limit 0, you put the bottom limit minus 1, and you subtract. Now notice, if I put 0 in, I'm going to get 0. So that's quite nice. So I've got just 0 minus, now carefully, you have to be careful when you put a negative number into, into an integrated function, because you just have to make sure that it goes in correctly. Minus 1 to the power 4 is plus 1, so that's 1 quarter minus, now minus 1 all cubed is minus 1, so that turns into plus 1. Minus 1 all squared is 1, and that's minus, minus 5 twelfths, which gives us a positive result of 5 twelfths. That's this area here, so let's label that, so that's 5 twelfths. Now, separately we do this integral. Now, it's the same integration. We're integrating this, this time between 0 and 2. So actually, I'm going to skip a step. I'll go straight to the integration. I'll go straight to the integrated function, because we're integrating the same thing. It's just different limits now. So I'll go straight to the square brackets. x to the 4 over 4, x to the 3 over 3, minus x squared between 2 and 0. Notice this time, when you do the bottom of the zero, you won't get anything. But you will if you put 2 in. So if I put 2 in, I get 2 to the 4 over 4. That's 16 over 4 minus 2 cubed minus 8 over 3 minus 2 squared, which is 4. Now notice, 16 over 4 is 4 minus 4. Those cancel away. And you get minus 8 over 3. Now, had I done this problem in one go, I would have done 5 over 12 minus 8 over 3, they would have netted off, and your area would have been less than the true value. That's why we had to do it separately. So finally, now, I can see that the area above the x-axis is 5 over 12. This minus just tells me it's below the x-axis, and therefore this is a positive 8 over 3 area, it's just below the x-axis. And therefore... The final answer would be, I'll do it in this corner over here, 5 over 12 plus 8 over 3, which is 37 over 12. Now, this principle of being careful when areas go above and below the x-axis has applications in mechanics. I've already done a variable acceleration video, um, which uses this point. So just to connect the two ideas, we know that when you're solving a distance travelled problem, you have to integrate a velocity time graph to get the distance travelled. But sometimes the distance travelled will require you to have an area above the x-axis and an area below the x-axis. And how would you know if that's the case? So either you could draw the velocity time graph and see, ah, the area goes below the x-axis after this point, so I'll integrate from here to here and integrate from here to here and then remove the negative from this particular integral. But also, you can recognise that 
the point where it goes below the x-axis is this point here, when v is equal to 0, which makes sense. Because when something stops, that's when it turns around. Okay, you, you're maybe familiar with this in SUVAT. When you throw something up, it reaches its maximum height at v equals 0, then turns around. When you're turning around, that's where you have a clash between displacement and distance. And that's where this problem is occurring. So when you're doing a distance travel problem in mechanics, you should solve v equals 0. And if there are any t values when you solve that in the range that you have to find the distance traveled, you then need to split the integral between the beginning of the, of the range of t values up until that point, and then from that point to the end, assuming there's only one t value when v is 0 in your range. You can see an example of this in my video that I've done on variable acceleration.